Welcome to San Bruno Library Presents Once Upon a Time, and my name is Miss Rocky, and you'll be seeing a skit that is called Gecko Cannot Sleep, and you can find that story in this book called Earth Care that you can find in our library. We also have it in a picture book, and it's titled Go to Sleep Gecko, and it's a Balinese folktale by Margaret Reed MacDonald. And this is a great story. It is about a gecko. Do you know what a gecko is? It's a kind of lizard. And you find it in Bali. And they're cool lizards because they can be upside down on the ceiling. And they don't fall because they have special feet. And they are considered good luck in Bali. So enjoy the skit and I'll see you later. Bye. Now imagine this, I, the chief, am peacefully sleeping, and I hear so loud, Gecko! 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 Gecko, it is the middle of the night. Go home and go to sleep. I can't sleep. The fireflies are flitting all around my house, flashing their lights on and off, on and off. You're the chief. You've got to make them stop. Do something about it. I will talk to the fireflies in the morning. Now go home and go to sleep. Gecko! 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 The next morning, I call the fireflies. Fireflies, is it true that you've been flashing your lights on and off, on and off all night long, keeping Gecko awake? Well, yes, we've been flashing our lights on and off, on and off all night long. Buffalo comes and leaves manure in the road. If we didn't light the way, people would step in his poop. Why, that is very thoughtful of you. You may go home now. That night at midnight, I am sound asleep and I hear that crazy... Gecko! 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 Gecko, it is the middle of the night. Go home and go to sleep. I still can't sleep. The fireflies are flashing their lights on and off, on and off. You said you'd make them stop. Gecko, the fireflies flash their lights because buffalo leaves manure on the road. Without the fireflies' lights, people would step in it. Then talk to buffalo. You're the chief. Do something about it. Gecko, gecko, gecko. The next morning, I call Buffalo. Buffalo, is it true that you've been leaving manure all over the roads? Yes, rain comes every afternoon and washes holes in the road, so I must fill it with my manure. <laughs> if I didn't fill it with my manure, people would step in the holes and get hurt. Why, that is very thoughtful of you, Buffalo. You may go home now. That night at midnight, I am sound asleep, and I hear so loud, Gecko! 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 Gecko, it is the middle of the night. Go home and go to sleep. I still cannot sleep. Those fireflies keep flashing their lights on and off, on and off, all night long. You said you'd talk to Buffalo and do something about it. Gecko, Buffalo fills up the holes that rain washes out. The fireflies light the roads so people don't step in Buffalo's manure. You will just have to put up with the fireflies. Then talk to rain. You're the chief. Do something about it. Gecko, gecko, gecko. The 
next morning, I tell myself, I must do my job as chief. So I call Rain. Rain, is it true that you rain every afternoon? Yes, I have to rain every afternoon to make puddles in the road for the mosquitoes. If I let the puddles dry up, the mosquitoes would die and Gecko would have nothing to eat. So every afternoon I rain. I see. You may go home now. That night at midnight, I am sound asleep and I'm being woken up by that. Gecko, gecko, gecko. Gecko, it is the middle of the night. Please go home and get some sleep. I cannot sleep. The fireflies keep flashing their lights on and off, on and off. You said you'd do something about it. Gecko, listen very carefully. If rain doesn't rain every afternoon, there will be no puddles. If there are no puddles, there will be no mosquitoes. And if there are no mosquitoes, you, Gecko, my friend, will have nothing to eat. <gasps> what do you think of that? Let me see. So, you, the chief, could tell rain to stop raining. And then Buffalo could stop filling the holes. And then Fireflies could stop flashing their lights on and off, on and off, all night long. But then I would have no mosquitoes to eat? That's right, Gecko. There are just some things you have to put up with. Now go home and go to sleep. So I go home, gecko, gecko, gecko. I close my shutters, I shut my eyes, and I go to sleep. Outside, the fireflies flash their lights on and off, on and off, all night long. Some, some things you, you just have, have to put up with. with. Did you like the skit? Did you recognize me? Do you know what part I played? If you said the chief, you're right. I played the chief and Miss Barbara played the gecko and Miss Susan played the buffalo and rain and the fireflies. I hope you enjoyed it. We had so much fun doing that skit. And now let's get ready for story time. Let's start with our first song. Let's have our hands up like this. We'll do the open, shut them song. Open, shut them, open, shut them. Give a little clap, clap, clap. Open, shut them, open, shut them. Put them in your lap, lap, lap. Creep them, crawl them, creep them, crawl them. Right up to your chin, chin, chin. Open. Open up your little mouth, but do not let them in. Don't let them in. Oh, good job. Let's do that one more time. And don't let those hands and little fingers get in your mouth. All right, let's do it again. Hands up like this. Let's shut them like that. And let's sing it again. Open, shut them. Open, shut them. Give a little clap, clap, clap. Open, shut them. Open. Open, shut them, put them in your lap, lap, lap. Creep them, crawl them, creep them, crawl them. Right up to your chin, chin, chin. Open up your little mouth, but do not let them in. Oh, good job. You didn't let those hands in. All right, let's start our first story. And today I'm going to read stories about friendships and making friends. And the first story is called, Big Bad Wolf is Good. And we always hear the big bad wolf is not good. But this bad wolf is going to try to be good. So let's read about Big Bad Wolf is Good. 
This story is by Simon Putak. Big Bad Wolf was lonely. He had no friends. Perhaps it's because I'm big and scary, he said to himself. Perhaps it's because I'm bad, bad, bad. And he sat and he thought and he thought. I know, he said. I will not be bad anymore. I will be good. Then someone will be my friend. So Big Bad Wolf set off to be good. Mrs. Goose was in the garden with her seven little goslings. Good day, said Big Bad Wolf, politely raising his hat. Honk, 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 cried Mrs. Goose. It's Big Bad Wolf, it's Big Bad Wolf. And Mrs. Goose and her seven little goslings ran into the house and slammed the door. Oh, Mrs. Goose, said Big Bad Wolf sweetly, please open the door. I'm a good wolf now, and I've come to play with your seven little goslings. But Mrs. Goose, she would not open the door. And the seven little goslings began to chant, Big Bad Wolf, stay away. Don't come back another day. And they made faces, they made silly and scary faces through the curtains. The wolf doesn't look happy, does he? Big Bad Wolf felt sad. Those geese had not given him a chance. He sat and he thought and he thought. I know, he said, I will be useful and good. Then someone will be my friend. So Big Bad Wolf set out to be useful and good. Mrs. Chicken was going out and she was waiting for the babysitter for her six little chicks. Where can that babysitter be? She fussed. Ha hem, Big Bad Wolf coughed politely. I would be glad to sit with your six little chicks. Yikes, buck, 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 squawked Mrs. Chicken. It's Big Bad Wolf, run children, run. And they ran into the house as fast as they can and slammed the door. They got scared too. Oh, Mrs. Chicken, said Big Bad Wolf sweetly. I am a good wolf now. Please let me in to look after your six little chicks. But Mrs. Chicken, she would not open the door. And the six little chicks chanted, Big Bad Wolf, stay away and don't come back ever again. And they made faces through the curtains. See, they're making silly and scary faces to scare the wolf away. Well, Big Bad Wolf was really sad. Those chickens had not given him a chance. He sat and he thought and he thought and he thought. I know, he said, I will be useful and good and I will do a noble deed then someone will surely be my friend. So Big Bad Wolf set off to be useful and good and do a noble deed. And a noble deed is something that you do extra, extra nice and good. Mrs. Duck stood on her doorstep calling, where are you number five, where are you? Good evening, Mrs. Duck said Big Bad Wolf, bowing politely. What seems to be the trouble? May I be of some assistance? Well, Mrs. Duck flew into a rage. Quack, 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 she cried. It's Big Bad Wolf and he's eaten my poor little number five. And she rushed inside and slammed the door. 
big bad wolf was upset. He banged on the door. Mrs. Duck, let me in, he howled. I haven't eaten anybody. But Mrs. Duck would not open the door. And the little ducklings, one, two, and four, and three, they all sang, Big Bad Wolf, stay away and don't come back because you've eaten number five. And they made sad faces at him through the curtains. They were sad. Eat number five, indeed, shouted Big Bad Wolf. I'll show them I won't be good. I'll be bad, bad, bad. And Big Bad Wolf was stamping through the woods in a terrible temper when he heard a small, sad voice. Quack, I'm lost, said the voice. And Big Bad Wolf stepped out from behind a tree. Quack, cried number five. Quack, quack, help, help, it's Big Bad Wolf and he's going to eat me. Well, Big Bad Wolf's feelings were horribly hurt. If you don't stop being silly this minute, he roared, I will eat you, so there. And number five looked up at the wolf and a fat little tear rolled down his bill. <laughs> I want my mommy, he said. There, there, said Big Bad Wolf. We will find your mommy. And he scooped up number five and put him in his pocket. Big Bad Wolf knocked at Mrs. Duck's door. Excuse me, he called sweetly. I've found number five. And the door opened a tiny crack. <gasps> Have you really? asked Mrs. Duck. Really and truly, said Mrs. Duck. Really and truly, said Big Bad Wolf. And you haven't eaten him, asked Mrs. Duck. And when Mrs. Duck saw her lost little duckling, she snatched him inside and shut the door. Bang! Right on Big Bad Wolf's nose. Big Bad Wolf walked away sadly. He had been useful and good, and he'd done a noble deed. But still, nobody wanted to be his friend and a big fat tear rolled down his nose. Oh, Big Bad Wolf, cried Mrs. Duck, opening the front door, and Big Bad Wolf stopped. Would you like to come inside for a cup of tea? She asked, and Big Bad Wolf turned around. Yes, yes, that would be great, he sniffed. And Big Bad Wolf he had a lovely visit. He drank three cups of tea and 11 cookies and then played with the ducklings. One, two, three, four, and five. Thank you, Mrs. Duck, said Big Bad Wolf when it was time to go home. Oh, thank you, Big Bad Wolf, said Mrs. Duck, for finding duckling number five. You are a hero. Do you think? asked Big Bad Wolf shyly. Can you call me Big Good Wolf now? And Mrs. Duck laughed. Don't be silly, <laughs> she said and gave him a big warm hug. You will always be Big Bad Wolf, but you are good too. The end. Did you like that story? Oh, I hope you did. Big Bad Wolf turned good, right? And he made new friends. Let's start the next story. And remember, I'm talking about friends and making friends. And this book is called A Pig is Moving In by Claudia Fries. And maybe some of you have moved to a new home or to a new town, new city. And this pig, he's moving in somewhere new. And you have to make new friends when you move somewhere, right? So we're going to read about pig 
and the friends that he makes. Let's see if he makes new friends. A pig is moving in. One morning, as Henrietta Hen was hanging her wash, Dr. Fox greeted her with exciting news. A new neighbor is moving into our building today. Oh dear, said Henrietta. I hope it is someone quiet and tidy. And Nick Hare over here popped his head out the window. A clean cat or an orderly mole would be nice. Soon, they heard the new tenant, that's the new person moving in, arriving. And Nick Hare and Dr. Fox and Henrietta Hen all hid at the top of the stairs to get a glimpse of the new neighbor. And when they saw him, they could not believe their eyes. He was not a clean cat and he was not an orderly mole, nor was he a fox, a hen, or a hare. Oh my, gasped Henrietta, it's a pig. A pig is moving in. That won't do at all. Everyone knows that pigs are messy and dirty and sloppy. Dr. Fox and Nick Hare, they nodded their head in agreement. Later that day, Dr. Fox met the pig carrying firewood. Well, Dr. Fox walked fast and he did not say hello, but he did slow down enough to see what the pig was up to. And he wasn't a bit surprised when, he, when the pig dropped some pieces of wood on the sidewalk. Looks like he made a little mess. Well, Dr. Fox, he went to complain to Henrietta Hen. What a mess, he said. That pig has left wood all over our sidewalk. Oh dear, said Henrietta. And she went out and looked, but she couldn't see any wood. Dr. Fox must have swept it up, she thought. But guess who is sweeping up the wood? The pig. He swept up the mess. Then he went up to his apartment to build a nice warm fire. So Henrietta Hen thinks that Fox cleaned up the mess, but you see here that it was Pig, right? He cleaned up his own mess. Next, it was Henrietta Hen turn to meet the Pig. He was carrying two heavy bags of groceries and she didn't say hello to him either, but she did sneak under the stairs to see what the pig had dropped. And she wasn't a bit surprised when he dropped a bag of flour at the bottom of the stairs and it burst open with a puff and a splat. Henrietta Hen went to complain to Nick Hare. What a mess, she said. That pig has left our front hall covered in flour. <gasps> How dreadful, exclaimed Nick, and he went out and looked, but he couldn't see any flour. Henrietta must have cleaned it up, he thought, but guess who cleaned up his own mess? It was the pig, he swept and mopped the floor. Then he went into his kitchen to bake some cinnamon cookies. Mmm. Not long after, Nick Hare met the pig and he walked slowly behind the pig so that he wouldn't have to say hello. But he did wait to see what would happen and he couldn't believe his eyes. The pig was carrying mud into his apartment and the mud was dripping all over the floor and the pig walked right through it, leaving a trail of hoof prints behind. What a mess, right? 
Rockwell Nick Hare went to complain to Dr. Fox and Henrietta Hen. What a mess, he said. That pig has left mud all over our stairs. Disgusting, agreed Dr. Fox and Henrietta Hen, shaking their heads. But when they went out and looked, they couldn't see any mud. Nick Hare must have cleaned it up, they said. But it was the pig who had scrubbed the stairs three times over. And it wasn't mud, it was clay. And the pig was taking it up to his workshop to make pottery. And here he is making some little figures out of the clay. I wonder what he's going to do with his figures. That does it, declared Henrietta, Nick, and Dr. Fox. If a pig wants to live in our building, he must behave properly. Otherwise, he'll have to go. And they marched upstairs to tell him. They rang the doorbell. Ding dong, ding dong, ding dong. Oh, hello, said the pig. He was surprised to have visitors so soon. Dr. Fox, Henrietta Hen, and Nick Hare were about to complain when the door opened wider and a sweet smell of cinnamon floated out and they heard a fire crackling in the pig's living room. We noticed a mess in the hallway, began Dr. Fox. Oh, I do apologize said the pig, and I hope I've cleaned everything up thoroughly. Well, Dr. Fox, Henrietta Hen, and Nick Hare, they looked at one another in surprise. So it wasn't you who swept up the wood, said Henrietta to Dr. Fox. And it wasn't you who cleaned up the flour, said Nick to Henrietta. And Henrietta shaking her head, no. And it wasn't you who washed away the muddy hoof prints, said Dr. Fox and Henrietta Hen to Nick. And they were looking at each other saying, it wasn't me. Well, as you can imagine, they were very embarrassed. They realized that the pig had cleaned up everything himself. My name is Theodore, said the pig. Will you join me for some tea? So they did. Dr. Fox, Henrietta Hen, and Nick Hare went into Theodore's bright, clean kitchen and helped him set out tea and cookies. They admired all the cups and pots he had made in his workshop. I have a new game we could play, said Theodore. And when he got out, Henrietta was flattered to see that he had made a special playing piece for each of his new neighbors. And as you can see here, they're playing a game with the new figures that he made out of clay. Why, you have a lovely apartment, Theodore, said Nick Hare, biting into another cookie. It's a beautiful place, echoed Dr. Fox and Henrietta Hen, and they were happily imagining all the cozy afternoons they were going to spend together. What a wonderful new neighbor they had. The end. And they made a new friend. And here they are hanging out together outside. Very good. What great listeners you are. And now it's time to say goodbye. I hope you enjoyed story time today. And do you remember our goodbye song? And if you don't, that's okay. Sing along with me, okay? Oh, it's time to say goodbye to our friends. Oh, it's time to say goodbye to our friends. Oh, it's time to say goodbye. Make a smile and wave goodbye. Oh, it's time to say goodbye to our friends. Thanks, everybody. Hope to see you again. See you next time. Bye.